Morning everybody. We are processing our squash today. I just butchered it in half and Melanie's scooping the seeds. And it's bigger than me. <laughs> it's huge. We've already had two meals out of this and this is the remains which uh, Melanie is going to can today. Uh, when she scrapes the seeds out I will cut it up into uh, manageable pieces and then Melanie will um, sort out the seeds. Haha. <laughs> Did you know you're going to sort the seeds? No. That's what you're going to do. We're going to do it. That's a lot of seeds. So, all right, now it's my turn. I'm going to put the camera down and uh, I'm going to process this big monster and get it ready for cooking. We're going to cut it up into little chunks and uh, then we're going to skin it. Actually, I think we'll cook it and then peel the skin off. That'll be easier. So we'll cut it up in the chunks, boil it, and then take the skin off, and then can it. And we've got squash for later. Mm -hmm. This thing's bigger than the kitchen. <laughs> That's scary. Yeah, it is. I can keep my fingers. No. I thought I said, I thought, oh no, that's scary, Joy. You're weird. Well, I still got this big piece. That's only half. Wow. Well, guys, that is a lot of squash. That's a big pot full. And we got a nice amount of seeds. Good stuff. We'll roast some of them. Good stuff. Some of these will go in the freezer for later use, some will go in the fridge, and some is going to be canned. Hey everybody, these things are way too big to move, and so I'm splitting them in place, and uh, then it'll be easier to move. Hard to split.
going to be ready to cure as well. Oh, ah, that one's got knots. I found that although my log splitter now has a big engine, it still can't split this stuff. Uh, I think the pump itself is not that powerful. There's knots right through that thing. We can see one right there. Stringy wood. It's terrible stuff to split. Terrible. Tears you, tears you out fast, just a couple logs. That's so stringy. But it's gotta go. Hi guys. I didn't tell anybody, um, although it's no fault of mine, the EcoTemp, um, and I can't remember if that's the L5 or E5, the model number. It was the 5 model number, and then the next step is the 10. Um, burn out on me long ago and no fault of mine I tried uh, propane tanks different fittings different batteries water flow adjustments it just quit working the thing did not last at all and sadly because the I had purchased it in winter and by the time it failed on me the guarantee period was up I had no I was stuck all right, I bought it on online, um, not for, from not directly from EcoTemp, and um, when it failed on me, I was stuck with a defective and dead uh, water heater. So I am no longer going with these camping heaters for the off-grid tiny house on wheels. By the way, this thing hardly did run at all. Uh, to be honest, I hardly even used it and it just quit so it was a defect in the manufacturing and a flaw and um, it is what it is so I've got a Mary brand I don't know if you can see it but you'll see it what's on the on it's on the wall I've got a Mary M-A-R-E-Y brand with digital display and a true exhaust to vent to the outdoors so this is a much bigger model with three gallons per minute flow and I'm going to install that and then exhaust it to the outdoors now I will certainly have to insulate this shed before winter and have a steady source of heat in here plus a propane backup for um, if I'm ever gone or for emergencies if the, the wood stove ever goes out so that is something I will be doing. I will be finishing off the shed and fully ins insulating everything, including the roof, before winter. I have to do it. So I just undid the fittings before I decided to grab the camera and I'm gonna remove that and then mount this one on there and I'm gonna move the water uh, pump and everything over as soon as I know where that goes. I also 
also like that I can walk in here now behind the tank, which is what I had desired. So I also undid, I loosened the screws. Wait a minute, how's that work? Um, I thought I knew what I was. Well, that one goes up. And that one, oh, I have to take that one out. Okay. And this comes out. Now, I may try to deal with the company and see if they'll do something about that directly in the future. But for now, I'm married and I need a shower. Uh, we've been using solar hot water the whole summer. But that's not feasible now anymore because it's getting cold and the sunlight hours are becoming reduced. So, Got to make some changes around here at the off-grid homestead. Hi everybody. Uh, had to go to town and get some more clamps for the hoses. I had to redo my connections here because the uh, this is a bigger heater and I couldn't fit it together with the uh, fittings that I had, uh, the way it was set up before, it was too short for this bigger heater. So now there's the hot water out fitting. Good. That'll go in there. Now, another thing I have going on right here is I've got something we've been using heavily is a garden hose connection. I don't know if you can see down. I can't see a thing in here what I'm doing what I'm looking at. Um, the sun is so bright on me I can't see the camera lens. Uh, I have a garden hose connection here which if I turn it on is going to shoot water. All right. Anyway I've got this which we use heavily and I've got a valve for that. Now that comes off of here. Now um, right, right off the water pump. Now I want to tee off of that, and I've got plenty of extra line here too. I want to tee off of this to go into the water heater. So, I think there's a tee. I can't find these fittings though is the problem. I think what I'm going to have to do today is remove this line, come into here, uh, right here. I'm going to have to do this, put this one back on later because I just realized, let's see, nope, I think I have the fittings. I got to double check. Yeah, I calculated it correctly. So, I'm going to leave this line on. I'm going to cut into here and put another valve and another when I have another T coming off to the to this. So this goes outdoors to the garden and we do use it a lot for the garden hose. So I'll, I'll be right back with the other fittings I need. Hey guys, I'm back on camera. Got a bit of a mess. I cut the high pressure line. I didn't realize there was still water pressure in the house and I cut the line. And oh boy, it bursts with power. So I'm putting on the cold water intake right now. I have, um, what do you call the tape, Teflon tape on there. We'll snug that on and then I'm going to have to move the water pump to fit over here to this point. Um, pipe wrench here. snug that on there nicely. Oh, that's right. They said to use a uh, wrench on there to protect that from harm. So let me go see if I have a wrench that fits. Hey, everybody. Well, I got all the plumbing. It was quite a job, I'll tell you. It was quite a job. I've got all the lines pressurized. I have not turned on the hot water tank yet. All the lines are pressurized. 
the house has water and everything is good right now and I'm just checking to make sure there's no leaks because I took a lot this all apart and reassembled it a couple times over already it was quite a job here now I'm going to turn on the pressure to the water heater okay now the lines are going to fill out Now the house is pressurized. Hot and cold water in the house are all pressurized. So I've got to make sure there's no leaks around these fittings, not around any of my crimp on fittings. I've got to go to the house, I've got to make sure there's no leaks around here. And when all that's done, then I can connect a propane line and try running hot water. So I'm going to go in and just uh, try the faucets and make sure that we have uh, the water coming out of the faucet. Although it's not turned on yet, I just want to make sure that the water flows out of both faucets and there's no leaks in the house. Hi guys. Alright, I just brought in a propane tank. Now if I can figure out where I put the regulator. Um, it's getting dark. Um, I'm, oh, thank you Chris. Chris happened to walk in and <laughs> there it was. Uh, this took longer than I had thought. Longer than I had expected. Why this does not turn. Can you help or? No, I just have to spin this as I turn it. It's sort of a, a cheap fitting, I guess. Alright. It doesn't rotate, it doesn't spin. Now, I gotta tighten it. So the water, everything's pressurized in the house everybody and there's no leaks that I could find. Of course we knew that before because I had a system running in the past. Now I just have to reattach a new heater into the same lines that I had which should be no big deal. Tell me how many people agree that these crazy crescent wrenches have a mind of their own and seem to self-adjust in the opposite direction that you want it to automatically. Aren't right, that right, Chris? Yeah. They seem to adjust themselves and laugh at you. Yep, it just did. I hate those wrenches. I don't know how it does it. I try only to use those things in last resort. It's all I got to fit this at this time. Yeah, as I'm saying, I use try to use them only as a last resort. All right, I'm gonna have to check that with bubbly water later. Now, we've got some batteries. And open this up, which way is open, I don't know, plus, this is awkward because they go upside down inside, oh it does have pressure, okay, minus, it does hold, they thought of that at least, now, now, there shouldn't be anything happen, Hooking up the propane, guys. I am connecting the tank. And I'm going to turn on the gas. Smell for leaks. I want to give that a minute. I'll be back in a minute. I want to let that sit before I do anything. Make sure there's no leaks. Alright, guys, I've been running back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, couldn't get any pressure in the lines, and now I found out why. Or I couldn't get any hot water. It wasn't igniting or anything. There is, uh, it was air in the system and it took a while to purge it. Turn it on!
Is it warm? I'm not seeing a display. Do you see we'll have warm water or cold? All right, turn it off. Turn it off. Now go to the bathroom and turn the bathroom sink on high. And then when I yell, turn it off. I think that the kitchen is not going to have hot water. I don't think there's enough pressure through the sink. Turn it on. Cold water. Off. Hi guys, I just asked Melanie to turn on the shower. This is a beautiful sight, everybody. There it is, you can see the flame. That's a beauty, 126 degrees Fahrenheit. Off! Let's go inside and check that out. All right guys, let's see if we have hot water. Oh yeah, that is hot. Look at the steam, guys. Look at the steam. Hot water. All right, I don't know if you can see in here. Let me see. Hot water, hot water, guys. We have hot water. It's steaming up. Again, finally, we've got hot running water in a tiny house and wheels. Melanie, what do you think? Turn around. Let everybody see that big fat smile. How do you feel? <laughs> Hi guys, I built a sawbuck today using all recycled materials and that is for cutting the butt ends of trees. Once they get awkward to cut, I throw it onto my new homemade sawbuck, which by the way, I designed so I can roll the tree onto the sawbuck and then it rests in the notch and then I can cut as well and I've set it up to fit the dimensions of the logs that I need for the tiny house on wheels. And then I went and I cut all these. I don't know if you remember, there were a couple uh, pieces of tree here. And here, mixed in with our uh, little uh, construction wood pile, there was uh, two, two pieces of trees, all gone, all gone. And over here, guys, you remember, there was a bunch of trees, all gone all chopped up so check out that video I was very happy with that and I know a lot of people told me to do it a long time ago but I finally got it done and I'm happy I did so check out that video good evening girls Melanie and girls. goat girls yes two girls um, I'm gonna adjust this although you're very comfortable there aren't you Yeah. I'm going to adjust this platform so that Melanie doesn't have to sit like a frog on the back end of the uh, milking station with her head in the goat's butt. That is this evening's milking. Are you done? Oh, okay. She's going to eat some food. I'm going to fire up the log splitter so I don't think it'll bother her. Do you think? Yes. It will? Well, I guess we're going to find out. So I'm going to fire up the log splitter and split some more of these logs that I cut earlier. And uh, use up the time until dark and then I go in and edit videos. Been splitting wood, guys. Uh, a lot of the wood I had over here that I cut earlier, I'm splitting. Uh, my pile is growing. And then over here, uh, there was a bunch of wood here. And I got half of the wood over here. I got another wagon load and a half. And, uh, but, and then I'll be done. But Melanie called for dinner. And that's it, everybody. Choice from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Good night.